As friends and family prepared to lay him to rest, the authorities in Oakland, California, prepared to arraign the man who confessed to killing him. Police say they believe 25-year-old Tyrone Robinson shot Newton in a dispute over crack cocaine. During his years with the Black Panther Party, Newton's run-ins with the law were frequent. Police say that in recent years, he had a history of drug abuse. But many of those who attended the funeral today dispute the police account of Newton's death, portraying him as a victim of the white establishment. And I think that it's the complete uh, assassination that was started 20 years ago. The guest list at the funeral read like a who's who of black revolutionaries. H. Rap Brown, who now calls himself Imam Jamil Abdullah Alameen. Angela Davis. You mean Newton? Know, symbolizes a whole era in the quest for African-American equality. And inside the church, a warm welcome for Bobby Seale, who founded the Black Panthers with Newton in 1966. Power to the people, brothers and sisters. To his friends, Huey Newton is regarded as a hero, not a lawbreaker. And they want him remembered for the way he lived, not the way he died. George Lewis, NBC News, Oakland, California as Huey Newton is buried today. Nearly 2,000 people were at the Allen Temple Baptist Church this morning. And many of the original Black Panthers were among the mourners today. In fact, one mourner was heard to say, we're here to celebrate his life, not to discuss his death. New Center Force Belva Davis was in Oakland for the funeral of Black Panther co-founder Huey P. Newton and is here now with more on the story. Belva. Bob and Sylvia, it was an emotional farewell for a man who, for better or worse, symbolized the black struggle for self-determination during the 60s and 70s. Attending the services today were the royalty of the black power movement of that time. Oakland gave a state funeral to a revolutionary today, Huey Percy Newton, the controversial co-founder of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. More than 2,000 people waited for up to three hours for a seat at the Allen Temple Baptist Church in East Oakland. The crowd filled the church and an adjoining hall. It was a service of celebration for what Newton accomplished in his struggle to give power to blacks. The recurring theme was a call not to let those outside the black community determine Newton's place in history. Bobby Seale donned his Panther beret for his remarks. The spirit of Huey P. Newton. You know, the spirit of Huey P. Newton was greater than the man's technology. And what he meant by that, you, the people, the people spirit, the spirit of the people, was always greater than the man's technology. Power to the people, brothers and sisters. But there were also repeated references to his brushes with the law and his bouts with drugs. The service took on the feel of a political rally when a power failure forced the use of a bullhorn. So our direct focus is, is to deal with the solution not only to Hugh's problem, but what is America's problem, and that's drug Party leader Elaine Brown introduced Johnny Spain, the former Panther who spent 21 years in jail following a bloody shootout at San Quentin Prison over a decade ago. Former radical H. Rap Brown is now a black Muslim minister. He came from Atlanta for the service. Congressman Ron Dellum, still mourning for his friend, Texas Representative Mickey Leland, who died in a plane crash recently, called on the audience to take their grievance to Washington. And this is the most propitious moment to stand up, not to take a march to Washington for one day, but to go to Washington for the long haul. Bush said to the Chinese government, I am sorry that you didn't negotiate with the Chinese students. Why don't hundreds of thousands of you go to Washington, D.C. and say, negotiate with me to end poverty, drug addiction, <laughs> Glide Church's Reverend Cecil Williams led the audience in We Shall Overcome as the casket was wheeled from the church. Of course, this is not the end to the Newton story. There's still the trial of the man Tyrone Robinson, accused of gunning Newton down following a drug dispute. But in spite of the cloudy ending to his life, clearly his death has ignited a spark in the black community, which says it's now time to fight harder in the war against drugs as well as against racism. Bob, Sylvia? It strikes me as so many names that used to be household words. I know, and it was interesting to see the young people there being introduced to these people today, uh -huh. seeing them as idols and wanting to get to know them. Remarkable. Well, I think this next story reflects the occasion. Outside the church, crowds began to gather early this morning. 
Thousands of people tried to get into a building that held only 1,200 chairs. New Center 4's Vic Lee has more. Me, but unto all so. Mourners gathered to pay their respect to former Black Panther leader Huey Newton. Lillian Combs came all the way from Nevada. I mean, I'm lucky, okay, that um, we had people like, okay, like, like Huey, you know, Jesse Jackson, <laughs> Dr. King. I mean, now there's no black heroes. By 10 o'clock, the chapel doors closed, leaving a huge crowd to listen to the service on loudspeakers outside. VIPs, including Congressman Ron Dellums, activist A. Trap Brown, and football star Jim Brown were ushered in through the back. The activists agreed. Newton symbolizes an era for the black movement. As we mourn him, uh, we celebrate the legacy that he left us of struggle and resistance. He challenged American society like most folks did not. And so therefore, he will go down in history as one of our most important black leaders who tried to turn the time clock of America as fast as possible, but America could not accept. Just before the service started, the crowd outside grew restless, trying to get in the gate. Former Black Panther founder Bobby Seal came outside to quiet them. Everyone just cannot get in, and I would appreciate it very much, me, old brother Bobby Seal, for you please to try to work with the monitors and the other people who are trying to see to it that we have an orderly processional session as Huey would have even loved the session. During the funeral service, as the crowd grew, they took to the streets, marching and chanting. Angry protesters blamed the FBI for Newton's murder. After more than three hours, the crowd got their first glimpse of Newton's casket. Activists promised that while Newton is dead, the black movement he began will live on. In Oakland, Vic Lee, News Center 4. The man accused of killing Huey Newton appeared in an Oakland courtroom this afternoon. Police say 25-year-old Tyrone Robinson has confessed he shot Newton last Tuesday in self-defense during an argument over cocaine. He faces murder and weapons charges. Robinson had no plea today, but he did have support in the courtroom. Robinson's attorney says that he will enter a plea on September 5th. New Center 4's Austin Longscott has spent much of his 25 years as a reporter covering civil rights issues and the Black Panthers. His thoughts tonight now on the passing of Huey Newton. Huey Newton's feeling for the streets was both his genius and his downfall. He grew up seeing terrible social problems on the streets of West Oakland. His Black Panther Party fought on the streets to politicize people and show them there was a way to fight those problems. And he died on the streets, a victim of one of today's worst street problems, the violence around crack cocaine. The streets that made Huey Newton's death a truly American tragedy threatened so many black youngsters that black leaders have been warning for several years about the loss of an entire generation. Too many black parents have been forced to give up hope. The problems of gangs, guns, narcotics, drive-by shootings, unemployment, homelessness, lousy public schools, and rotten housing are too much for them. They feel powerless to protect their kids against a vicious outside world. And with good reason. There are eight million more poor people now than there were 10 years ago. And the streets of poor neighborhoods are more dangerous than ever. These dangers are not allowed to inundate the streets of Piedmont or North Berkeley or Richmond's Hilltop area or Pacific Heights. Huey Newton's journey through life generated much admiration and inspiration, as well as much hatred and condemnation. His life is now finished, but finishing his vision is up to us. He knew the streets, and still the streets got him. How much chance do today's kids have out there? And how do we help them, as Huey Newton tried to help all of us? The baby